tonight we complete what has been a wonderful Tuesday evening um, season um, with grace and depth, which I find very fitting um, given the thoughtfulness of this particular season. Many of you know that Richard Tuttle is one of those artists who makes me believe. And with that, I am proud to say that this is the third time he has spoken for Tuesday evenings. And while I mentioned um, that multiple visits were also true for Rob Storr, who was here last week, um, and a few others, um, and this being the program's 25th year, um, it is not a common practice for me because I think um, unique voices in this context are extremely important. However, sometimes there's someone whose resonance bears repeating, but whose message, given their authenticity, is certain to be unique and relevant in the current moment. Richard Tuttle is one of those individuals, and I'm so glad he's agreed to be back with us here tonight. Richard is an artist married to a poet, the poet Meme um, Biersenberg, Brug, and um, they have together raised an artist. Some of you will recall Martha Tuttle being here a while back, um, delivering a smart and heartfelt lecture of her own. And I think all of this speaks to who Richard Tuttle is. Born in New Jersey and now residing in Maine, New Mexico, and New York, he has been the subject of numerous solo exhibitions, including his 1975 exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York that, um, I have to say, indirectly gave us the new museum. A few of you know what I mean by that. And a 2005 um, retrospective organized at SF MoMA. Um, then in 2014, he exhibited in Tate Modern's Turbine Hall and simultaneously had a full survey at London's Whitechapel Gallery. Other recent exhibitions include wire pieces at the Pulitzer Arts Foundation in St. Louis uh, in 2015, and a retrospective of his prints organized by ba uh, Bowden College Museum of Art in Brunswick, Maine. Um, in 2016, the Metropolitan Museum organized um, a beautiful exhibition titled Richard, Richard Tuttle, The Critical Edge um, in their new space for contemporary art which happens to be the Marcel Brower building, um, which kind of brings Richard full, full circle in some ways. Um, the Critical Edge has now traveled to Pace um, Gallery in London, where it is currently on view. Richard is a long, ha, is a long Richard's is a long and rich career. His work um, has, is held in more than 50 public collections, including Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh, Center, Center Pompidou in Paris, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, Museum of Contemporary Art Los Angeles, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., Tate London, Walker Art Center in Minneapolis, um, the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York, and I'm proud to say this museum, where he shared a quiet and absolutely amazing show with the artist Agnes Martin in 1998, which was one of my first experiences with this museum. Tonight's lecture is structured around three parts. For the first, Richard will read from a prepared text with silenced video images of, um, from various sources running on the screen above. For the second part, um, he will focus um, on four of his most his four most recent exhibitions with represent, represent, uh, representative images from each. And then the third portion is what I'm sure will be a very meaningful Q&A, accompanied by images from Richard's upcoming um, exhibition in Belgium. True to himself and therefore true to his work, Richard Tuttle is one of the most influential, important artists of our time. And we are beyond fortunate to have him here tonight. So please join me in welcoming Richard Tuttle. Uh, 
Our te technology, yeah, it's not working for us. Yeah. Okay. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. Good. Talk for Fort Worth. <laughs> Art helps you see what exists. Introduction. Opportunities and trepidations. One rides to Fort Worth with memories, contrasting darkness, and a happiness for knowing all the support given over the years for the thing we know and love best. Players have left. Why we are doing what we are doing has changed. A major show of mine and Agnes Martin's has graced these walls. Measure all things. We are still at the beginning. One, this world is here to make things better. When I begin to write for Fort Worth, after thinking a long time about it, I think of a bubble coming out of something, almost like an aneurysm pops from a vein. And I ask myself, what is that? The answer is a belief in or of a better world, a meaning I am working for this end or should be, and in order for it to survive, grow, and be happy. This bubble must have happened so long ago, imprinted so deeply. The aneurysm image I just used must confuse you, for I mean a good thing. All bubbles are good to me. Not a bad thing causing stroke, vein breakage. The same is true of many things. A window for me is an exciting passage of light through something, a structure that may be light itself too. Though I know what people have in mind when they say window, it is fun to learn fenêtre in French or mado in Japanese because it can be half my window, half theirs. There is the unquenchable belief people are good. Where did it come from? 
Art, for me, has a lot to do with putting in place things no one in their right mind would believe. When I see a work of art, everything I believe becomes true and more. I learn the world is a place to make things better. War is a failure, though sometimes it is the only way to make things better. Suffering leads to developing consciousness, not to hide suffering, but to live alongside it. It is no art to cause suffering. It is no art that comes from suffering. It is no art to call a window a window. A blister is not a bubble. The person who calls my bubble a blister would not be a good person. They would also be someone who is not trying to make it better. One gets very little reward for making it better. Only the satisfaction you helped to make it better. A blister comes from heat, pain, something wrong. A bubble has something joyful, wanting to come out, maybe yourself. But how did you get in there? The bubble seems surrounded. Okay, we're not going to do that either. Okay. Um, well, I guess John could run that again. I don't know. Can John hear? Can you run the the, the videos again? Thanks. Um, <clears throat> the bubble seems surrounded by bubble-like forms. They bulge. Only one expands, wants to break its shinier skin. This one seems chosen, the winner, the first to hatch. We are waiting. Curiously, it is the same as if we are seeing ourselves. Is the motivation we choose an act of birthing? In a museum, I look for birthing in progress, even if it's 3,000 years old. All time, is in birthing the passage from one to another. Imagine getting air from your lungs, yourself breathing. Imagine light. That is the light that carries through your whole life, different from sunlight, more spiritual, and the light of art. 
Two, I know I must work to help people suspend their disbelief, but I confuse them, frightening them with my words and ideas. When I see an artificial pond and the dam is too high or too low, or the gravel isn't just right, my bubble complains. It keeps me as young as when the bubble became my friend. I never complain. The bubble complains for me. But I am happy to hear any complaints of the bubble. I never thought I had good taste or even know what taste is because the bubble sets the standards. Whoa, if I don't listen to the bubble, not only will the bubble laugh at my mistakes, making me feel foolish, the bubble will find some way to punish me, like telling me something false. Of course, all this happens because the bubble has decided to tell you all about himself through me. Why did it make me so happy to see this walking recently on the streets of Paris? Well, it was a relief. There are two possibilities how to treat an invitation to speak. One is to talk, make a talk, like James Ensor, Bertrand Russell, or Charles Dickens did when they were old. The second is to speak about your work so it is easier to see. Fight against the resistance to all or part of it. The bubble is both. The bubble can speak about a work, a little bit this, a little bit that, which may be helpful, but will not come close to the whole. Or the bubble may walk you through a work like your teacher in art history class can walk you through a Cezanne or Italian primitive. The bubble knows seeing is always different, one day to the next, and different for different people. He knows there is no one absolute way of seeing for that would not be seeing, but looking instead. Oh, to be brave enough each day to have art in it, he says. The bubble will say of a recent show in London, I am lost in darkness. The bubble will say, I am trying to get away from you. I say, I want to see your happy face. And the bubble will say, I don't know where I am. 
then the bubble will say, I will find you because you cannot be here and not here. That way, I will find myself. Don't look for me. I will find you. That way, we will be together in a work of art, the visible and the invisible. Three, learn and discuss. I haven't said anything about the turf my bubble lies in. When I try to say something, I recognize my trying is no good. Often, it's better to let things happen. The subject for this talk was given inside such beautiful light, and I must say, received with such joy. I can't find any better way to have it be in applying myself to it. I have wondered why my works are less carefully done than they used to be when I was young. I almost miss the time unlimited feeling and want to make something that takes longer. This turns out to be like someone who wishes they were young again. Various components necessary to bring a work into the world do take longer now, all by themselves, which can give all the possible experience of endless time anyone can want. Yet, I do not want to stop speaking about my bubble. Even if I have grown not fond of the term, I could say mound or seed, like a seed that holds all that it needs to become a giant oak. It is also a will, an intention. How wonderful to be walking on the old streets of Paris in April and feel something like spring bursting, ready to burst. Not of French culture genetically, how much greater to feel connected culturally, historically, and naturally by this bubble. Someone said recently, American art is the greatest ever invented. I know what they mean. And I know it hasn't even been begun to be developed, researched, or made into what it is meant to be. It is an art about people People from every station, background, mix. It is a transference which can only happen 
between people, not a politics, not a family dynamic. It is a means to reach developed consciousness we all know exists and can employ to make happiness in adversity. It is an art with many enemies. It breeds them in its own backyard. It makes every mistake. It is not afraid to fail. Its nationhood is whoever it affects. It promises to say what we feel and show what we tell. Catch the spirit as so many have before. Writers, thinkers, talented businesswomen. That's what my work here in this museum is about. It says, catch the spirit in an art form. It is a jog forward, not a step backwards. To any earlier art, I am not a chauvinist. I wish I had another word to say, American, for being a member of a world community. We are trying to convert the spirit into a mind-body continuum, a collective energy, something which resists a cultural imperative the way a word resists one color. Four. To the death of a snow leopard, having seen born in China with my wife, the poet Maymay Bersenbrugge. Thinking without words is like having a language without. With words, I think I am speaking a language without words, the language of the beasts. What is it like to know my arrangement of sound comes out of language not superior or inferior, but still relative to others? I want to improve the language I speak, though others of its speakers may say mine are not improvements. They will say poetry does not improve. I say it keeps a language alive maybe connects human language to the language of beasts. Are other languages trying as hard to talk to plants and animals as English? Someone can say, I am prolonging the vertical social arrangement, but I am trying to open the horizontal to its fullest possible extension. 
If that fails, we will proceed to the vertical where we must invent new forms, good for all. <coughs> Five, to make and to speak two of my passions. Words are the best and the worst to make things. Meme says, my talks are more and more koans. Here is one to answer. What you are seeing is not what exists. Art is there to help us to see what exists. And here's another one. The problem, the concrete. To redetermine what is art, art must suffer to go outside its world, to define itself and to know what it is. It is not interpretation but the nature of art itself we are seeking. We can make this happen together. Abiquiu, New Mexico, 2017. Okay, so. Oh, all right. So. Um, and then let me turn this on. Okay. So, is this yeah? Is this working? I think it's working. Okay. Okay. This is this is the part where we're going to look at four uh, recent exhibitions. Um, this is um, that will be followed by a, a Q and A. So I'm going to try to move this through more quickly. Uh, this is the work referred to earlier that was uh, at the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art in, in New York, which um, I think is it's the first time in the history of the museum that, they, that an artist got to show new work, only a body of new work and nothing else but this body of new work. Uh, so I'm, uh, uh, it was uh, because I... My mom took me to the museum when I was four years old, and I just fell in love with the Met at that time, and uh, that it was a huge big deal to show something I made uh, in the Museum of Modern Art. So I must say, it, uh, my work, um, ooh, OK, that was not. So anyway, good, OK. Um, the, um, <clears throat> uh, actually, that's, that's, that's not a bad, bad thing, because the, there is a, um, a sequence in these and this one is the first of the three we're, we're looking at, that they, uh, they, uh, they develop, but I think what they're offering the viewer is a, um, uh, is a picture that uh, has more expanse uh, than one is ever used to having. I, and maybe I'll, I'll just quickly say this. That, um, I'm strange because, uh, in a sense, I come with two sets of roots, you know, and one set of roots is the abstract expressionist, the, the heroic generation of... Uh, um, because I, uh, I connected, I, I felt very much when I was starting out that the, they were not, they, that was the most important achievement in American art and that it wasn't respected and that I wanted to do something uh, that I felt would um, um, demonstrate uh, my 
personal belief in their importance. And so I went, I, I attached myself to the Betty Parsons Gallery, which was the gallery, the, the most important gallery for this group of artists. And so there in that developed this set of roots. Uh, but then the other set of roots is my uh, own generation, which some people refer to as post-minimal. Um, it's definitely a new, uh, it starts, it commences a new cycle of art history. Uh, and and my, uh, it's uh, kind of strange. I mean, I'm, I don't understand why, but, but, but when you emerge as an artist, you, you, there's something that fixes, you're fixed. And so what I just said fixes me as an ar uh, as a, uh, artist of the archaic. And we'll, I'll shortly show you an image that should support that. Uh, these, um, but I mean, the, this also would support that. Although, uh, uh, so um, in London, uh, we had this kind of miraculous, I, I continue to still think of myself as this little boy from New Jersey. And so like, you know, how are you invited to go to London, which is such an important place uh, in the contemporary visual world, and have two exhibitions, one downtown in the center, and then one uh, in the outskirts. Um, and it it seems these these pieces. This is a photograph, actually, of the exhibition, which is in central London, where you can expect the heaviest uh, uh, audience uh, to uh, uh, to confront your your work, um, and uh, it's uh, okay. So trouble is one thing. Uh, uh, you may not notice offhand. There are these little guys here and there and there. Uh, that's a part of the of the composition. They came about because uh, in placing the pieces of cloth on in their place, some would have very uh, long extra pieces. And what wound up happening was I would fold those back up under and then uh, attach them with these little uh, these little figure eights. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Now we're wow, we're there. That's amazing. Okay, everything. Oh, we're there. Boy, oh boy. Okay, okay. So um, anyway, I'm sure you can. Once I point them out, there's one, and there's one, and there's one. And you know, I love that that you know there's you know these panels, these three foot panels, which act as a kind of foundation, and then you have these three foot uh, panels or, or banners of cloth, and then you have this almost third layer, which is very um, uh, you know outside of uh, what it's like a uh, it's like a, a surface that comes forward. Uh, but the rules uh, of it are, they're always this uh, particular color that um, derives from the first work. So uh, they, I mean, <laughs> okay, um, yeah, all right. So again, we're, we're on, a, okay, I, I should have showed that one. Oh, no, God, oh, here we go again, there, okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go oh okay right forget that okay this is an example uh, this is an example of a piece that's shown um, out in the East End in London's East End which is uh, uh, kind of traditionally where you know the the, uh, uh, the funky part of the world lives and the uh, and and these this piece I I would say is a uh, example of a work that uh, comes out of the roots of uh, what I'm describing as, uh, uh, you know, this post-minimal. Um, it'd be fun to invent another, another word on this occasion than, than post-minimal. It's a, um, I, I actually, you know, one of the things I, I'd like to get 
get across, uh, and I, I tried to in my talk, but the, uh, that we're um, in this phase here, the, re the issues are about the concrete. They're not about the abstract. You know? And people who look at that would say, oh, that's an abstract picture. You know? It's not. You know, it's my attempt to say what I think is real. And, and that's, uh, you know, uh, for me, it, it contributes to uh, w w something I, I feel important because, I, you know, it's to run around and, and, and sort of wonder what is abstract or how we're supposed to use abstract or, you know, I mean, that's like, uh, it, it's just, it's not, you know, if it hasn't, you know, we've had a period where, many important contributions have uh, been given uh, but the you know um, what is uh, you know what the concrete is and and I suppose that ties me to more of a like the sculptural side of things than the painterly side of things but um, um, so uh, one in in doing this um, it's uh, i mean i mean this the sense that the these these roots this is one person but the the uh, product of this set of roots is at one part of a of a you know great city and the other is in another part but the the uh, that someone and I, I just received an email from a, a really terrific person who who just simply said you know what a treat you know to to be able to you know go to central London and see this one body of work and then go to the east end and see this other body of work and know that's by the same artist you know that's um, yeah so i'm i'm quite proud of that All right. so this is this is a work from um, a show in lima peru uh and uh this is a dream come true for me because i've had this thing that uh you know there's a tr tr transitioning from a horizontal uh, energetics to a vertical uh, and the these great uh, in fact my textile my involvement in textile is very much part of this uh, north-south axis because if you say look at the you know Rockies that go to the Andes and you'll see all along that line you know there's this extraordinary textile involvement and achievement uh, so um, and I, that's for me just theory, but I was looking for a chance to put that theory and to try it out. Because one of the parts of that uh, world is that color is allowed to solve structural problems. You know? uh, and we are not, uh, we, in the east-west energetics, you know, we only allow black and white to solve our structural problems. You know? and, and I think we have too many problems just to solve them, only black and white. So anyway, this, I, just one friend uh, uh, made a comment about these, which I, I sort of love. And he said that, uh, I said, well, you know, how did you like the show? And, and uh, he said, uh, 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 violent, but beautiful. And, and I think f in some sense, uh, I was able in this, oh, there's, I think, in two other pieces here, or one, I don't know. Okay, please, please. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. So this, this one actually comes before the one we just saw. Um, it's, uh, and what, what is sort of, because this color silver is a, a very important for me, and I think it's a very, a, silver is a, very important part of American art for reasons I can't get into. Uh, but this uh, board that I'm using here is actually backed by a silver. It has a, like a silver foil on it. And by, by cutting, painting and cutting and going back and forth, the back became the front. So, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, okay. Anyway, this, um, so like a piece of silver like that uh, 
was, uh, it's not, um, you we're nowhere near the collage idea. We're nowhere near a kind of intellectual space thing, you know. Um, and, uh, and that's like, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I find, uh, uh, you, you know, there's this, you get extra points if you go into the mouth of the dragon sort of thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in the way here. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so this this is uh, a, a work from a show I made in uh, Switzerland, you know, in a, a, a wonderful museum in Winter Tour, and the uh, I was invited uh, by a director who has to retire uh, to um, uh, exhibit in relation to uh, an important. Uh, body of work of an important artist in their collection. And in this case, it was uh, Arp, Hans Arp, Jan Arp, um, who um, uh, is um, an, an artist uh, of many achievements. Uh, but I think one of his greatest achievements uh, is, uh, is uh, the use of chance or accident in creative work. Uh, there are these amazing videos or films of him just, you know, dropping pieces of paper uh, to compose his paintings. Uh, this was like in the 20s or something like that. So, and but for me, he's also interesting because he's an example of an artist who um, uh, wrote uh, poetry. Um, he's known uh, in certain circles in this country uh, for his French poetry. Uh, which is perfectly fine, but in German poetry, uh, he's considered one of the five top poets of the 20th century. And so you get this uh, artist, you know, who uh, um, is moving in a in a world which is, uh, uh, you know, composed of visual elements and verbal verbal elements uh, uh, together, and and so. Uh, I made an alphabet. Alphabets come up in my work uh, quite frequently. Um, they announce a new chapter or, or we're kind of, you could say, new vocabulary or we're going to go out here. And uh, So this is um, a, a one uh, piece and the, its qualities, uh, I think the qualities I'm most proud of um, is the uh, I mean, it looks very simple, clearly, but um, but like a lot of artists and thought have, have gone into the the problem of they've seen the problem of art making in terms of you know how do you put something on something, and it just occurred to me, well, you know when you know when you put something, it's already something, you know, you don't have to like w worry. I mean, it. it uh, uh, and that freed my juices uh, to um, to go forward and explore this uh, this, this area. Um, but it, again, um, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, I sense we're we we need to start this Q Q and A period. I think of which. Uh, uh, okay. This is this is a, another example of the of the the body of, of work and uh, uh, I, uh, I mean one thing I'm I'm proud of <laughs> is about it looks like you know like why haven't we seen that before you know it's like so so simple you know or something but but that be, it's because Everything we've seen anything like this before has approached it as 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 two planes that are coming together. This is not a case of two planes coming together. It's a, it's a statement that you make that green stripe, you do that little white in the corner. That is the plane. It doesn't matter what it's on, you know. And that's the point of these pieces. It's, I mean, yeah, it's this piece of cardboard or whatever it is, you know. But but it uh, it is. Uh, independent, it, the work achieves an independence from its ground. 
Uh, and you know, the, the exhibition was extremely well. And then the museum bought all the pieces, which is always good. That's also true of the, uh, <laughs> of the, of the Lima uh, uh, pieces. The museum bought all the pieces. So you know, I, I mean, I, I think that's pretty uh, you know, feather in, in your cap when they, they like your work, your work, I mean, to that extent. You know. I mean, uh, so all, off we go. And um, OK, then, OK, now we start. This is going to cycle through. These are pieces. Um, that are set for uh, an exhibition I'm going to make in Ostend in Belgium. Um, and, and I'm not the first person to point to this extreme western coast of, of Europe as being a significant place. You know, a, it's a place to work out stuff. Um, uh, probably the most famous artist who looked uh, here is Joseph Boyce. Who did a big project about you know the Western Mensch and the Oster Mensch and the, all this, and they, that they both ended uh, right on this uh, coast off of Ostend, uh, and the uh, this is also a place where um, probably one of the greatest artists who's ever lived, uh, Jan van Eyck, lived in Bruges, you know, which is a stone's throw from Ostend, and the artist I'm. Uh, actually be showing my work with is uh, an artist named James Enser. Has anyone heard of James Enser in the room? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. He's, my line is, you know, of all the great artists, you know, he's the most accessible. But you shouldn't, for, for all that, you shouldn't forget he's a great artist. You know? I mean, he, he, he uh, delivers uh, generation after generation. He's, uh, and, but the key is that he understood the relation between light and color. You know that there is a relation between light and color, and and hardly anybody has understood what that relation is. I mean, in a way, he predicted relativity theory and quantum theory in art. You know, and I'm proud because, like, art was there before science. You know, sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, so um, okay. into the Q and A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So David and I are going to. If you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll come to you. Okay, so no hands are going up immediately. Is this on? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start with a question then. Um, my question is, what, does the role, what is the role of waiting, like W-A-I-T, yeah. in your practice, your life? What is the role of waiting? Um. Well, it, it's it's a funny question because in you know normal this world, our normal civilization world, uh, you rise higher uh, uh, so that you never have to wait for anything, you know, like like the president of the, um, but and so the you know people who are there waiting for the buses become like the 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 lowest end of of, but I find uh, you know waiting is. That's the top, you know. That that it's uh, it's the greatest uh, uh, when you um, receive the your your inspiration. Uh, it's always in a state where you're you're waiting, you know? and I suspect also we um, when we're waiting, we don't even know what we're waiting for because uh, uh, the uh, um, I mean what uh, the, the, the gift uh, that an artist uh, receives is is uh, Outside of any quality or quantity, and, and um, so, so you know, the answer to your question, I think, is waiting is waiting is is where it's at. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, not just where, but that's the the value uh, where uh, uh, you know values are are created. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, Do you see your, when you were talking about the bubble, it made me think of um, 
art as a placeholder for ideas or experiences. And I'm also thinking now, perhaps you might consider your art as a, a placeholder for both the problem and the solution that you're grappling with. Um, that's a little bit like, like, uh, <clears throat> like I guess when um, uh, <laughs> part of, uh, um, I mean, the artists, um, some artists, you know, the part of their work is is a kind of diction, you know, has a, a quality of diction in it. And um, uh, when I was just starting, I, I somebody asked for a statement, and which has been picked up and repeated quite often. It, it goes um, uh, to make something which looks uh, like it is. Uh, looks like itself is the problem, the solution. And, and that's, I think that's a pretty good statement in terms of what I'm trying to say about my, this other set of roots, which begins a new historic cycle. Because the, uh, you know, and, I mean, some people will say that's a tautology, but it's, it's not a tautology because it actually uh, is, uh, has three uh, over overlappings, and what it and for me it also uh, repeats what I just said about I'm trying to make something which uh, uh, um, uh, makes. Uh, um, uh, satisfies the a need uh, for uh, the the real or the the concrete. You know, I mean that it. I know it's, it. It must sound so bizarre because um, um, how uh, uh, the abstraction. Uh, you know, uh, in that last phase of art, uh, you have this, um, you know, this split between the, the human and the technological. And, and that was all very much a, a work, you know, how, how the, the middle class which dominated the world worked. But uh, there came like uh, there was were issues of struggle, and the artists were called upon to uh, because like the this this middle class has an appetite, has a hunger for abstraction, and and uh, when that uh, as long as you know we I'm middle class, you know as long as we our appetite for abstraction is satisfied, you know, everything's fine. But when the food that's feeding that abstraction runs out, and the food can come from science, it can come from education, it can come from anywhere, but when that runs out, what happens is we go to war. So this is what happened in sort of 1913, where it was produced some of the best art of the 20th century. Uh, uh, where the artists just went, you know, crazy to produce abstraction uh, because to, they thought that was a way to avoid war. You know, because artists are really nice people. <laughs> um, and uh, but and uh, the uh, uh, and that, and this tra tra tradition has gone gone on. But but in say my this. You know, generation that uh, that I'm attached to really changed the name of the game. You know, 
it's not about abstraction, you know. Then and 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 I, I maybe that was our dream, or because we we also thought that you know art is not something for some museum, you know. It's 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 how to get art out of the museum into life, you know, where art's intended to to do its work, you know. That's why I'm saying that that you do not see uh, what exists, you know. It's only with art that you see, and and when you have art in your hands, you know. What do you do with it? You use it to find what exists, what is actually there to see existence. You know, um, and and okay. So um, I was just about to say something. You know, like like this this kefir that's upstairs. You know, it's like I mean, it's what it, it it's. It's, it's about abstraction, even though it's representational. And it's showing how thin the membrane is between war and peace, and how, how desperately close we are living. Uh, uh, and you know, of course, in the presence of you know, these weapons of mass destruction and whatnot. Uh, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we started a new project. We were involved with uh, classifying and learning and offering uh, solutions of the concrete uh, long before Kiefer ever came along and rehashed the whole abstract problem again. So, and this is one of the reasons I say American art is the greatest art. You know, it is, you know, and, and it's, it's in a way tragic that uh, we, we're not respected uh, we, um, in fact, we are um, uh, suppressed. Um, and part, I hope, of this talk is about, you know, encouraging uh, the, I mean, th this, this whole issue where, you know, everyone is born, in, you know, with, with sense, you know, the five senses and consciousness. And at that point, you know, you have a choice. Everybody has a choice to suppress them, you know, or to develop them. You know. And in our civilization, we get the message over and over again: they should be suppressed, you know. And with that, the artist, you know, and all the people who use the musicians, you know, the, the any creative work, you know. And uh, but this approach, which is now 50 years old, or more than 50 years old, is, is focused uh, uh, on a, uh, the, the concrete about uh, that we, the art, American art, is concrete, and it is about people, and it is about the communications of people. It's concrete. It is not abstract. You know? And, and in order to, to get everything, to make American art what it's supposed to be, it has to be concrete, not abstract. You know? And we, we have to develop our senses you know, so that the concrete uh, has a chance to, uh, um, uh, to move forward. Because there's, a, I mean, there's such an a issue in the world where we're like stopped because uh, you like artists. Artists who are the ones right now who have who can actually center their work and 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 occupy. You know, take the take the position that is positive and is central. Nobody else in society can. But artists are not able to do that because they're. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it's it's a kind of. Uh, I mean, my position is, you know, like, okay, you hate me, you know, you suppress me, you know, what do I care? I'm still going to do it because I believe somehow the energy is going to flow out there, and and it's the most I can do, and is what I was born to do, uh, and you know, I get satisfaction out of doing the most it is. I think I can do to the best uh, that I think uh, 
I mean, that's what I said several times in this talk, that, the, that this world, this world is here. You know, the reason this world is here is to make things better. You know, that's the point. You know. And I think we're going to have to stop on that point. Yeah, yeah.